This is the last video in a series in which I have been repairing this Toshiba Toscal BC1411 Nixitude calculator. When I received this unit, it was in fairly poor cosmetic condition, mostly dirty, but it's got uh, it's been fairly banged up over the years. Very dirty keyboard, very dirty internally, um, but more importantly, it didn't work. The addition would work, but the multiplication, division, subtraction uh, didn't work. And it turned out that uh, all that was wrong with it was a single diode, so uh, very easy uh, fix. Took a bit of uh, tracking down to find the part, but not too bad. I think total repair time for the electronics was just over an hour. Uh, what took uh, most time on this was actually getting the case to fit properly. Like I said, it's been banged up over the years, and when I received this, the top cover was not aligned properly with the bottom half of the case. Been dropped at some point, and I think it had uh, pushed the top uh, across. So it wasn't lined up. The keys wouldn't uh, operate properly, they were rubbing on the edge of the holes that they protrude through. And uh, that was the internal chassis was bent, so I straightened all that out, but then I had to readjust the outer case, which uh, takes quite a bit of time on this unit. But it's nicely aligned now. Actually looks quite good. The uh, dings and scratches uh, give it some character, and um, I think I'm going to keep it like this. It, it does look quite nice. The um, I think the previous video I said that the overflow light uh, wasn't working and it might be the bulb. bulb was fine, it was actually just corrosion in the uh, bulb holder. Took that out, cleaned it, gave the keyboard a really good clean, cleaned the outer case and uh, as you can see I've reassembled it. And um, one thing that's interesting with calculators like this, I mentioned in a previous video that they operate in a very similar way to mechanical calculators and we'll come back to that in a few minutes but one thing that is very apparent when you uh, operate one of these is because it's very discreet in its design it's just using transistors and diodes and resistors it means that things like data storage are very hard to come by and very expensive to design into a unit like this so you do need at least two storage areas for things like division uh, because obviously you need the divisor and the dividend to be stored separately and so in general a machine like this will do division by repeatedly subtracting one value from another until it gets an underflow and then that's what uh, the resulting count uh, the number of times it's done that is the answer so the question really is where does the data get stored in this i mentioned that there's only a single data register in this and somebody asked well if that's the case how can it do division because it will need at least two data storage registers does it use the memory uh, no it doesn't use the memory the memory is a completely separate entity it's not used directly in the calculations what i'll do is a simple division and hopefully if you watch the display carefully you'll see exactly how this works and it is quite ingenious the way they went about doing this. So if we enter a value like 10,000 and we divide that by 23, if you watch the display very carefully, then you may have noticed that the last two digits changed to 23 during the calculation. I'll do it one more time. So if you think about it, when you do a division, the number of digits you need is always going to be fairly constant because when you divide a number by another number, you make one number smaller and the number you make it smaller by is ratio metric with the number you're dividing by. So it's a fixed number of decimal places you can use. So the way this calculator works is it actually uses the upper digits during division to store one of the two numbers that you're entering for the calculation. So just do it one more time. And you can see that's exactly how this calculator works. So it's very ingenious, it just means they could reuse the uh, storage elements for each digit for different purposes depending on what was going on and all it has to do is keep track of where the decimal point is. Uh, which is true of the mechanical calculators as well. It doesn't care that the decimal point's there. Uh, all it uh, cares about is 
working on the digits uh, in the order they are presented. Uh, so that's uh, kind of how it works in terms of making use of the storage for the main working register. Um, but one uh, thing that's always interesting to do with calculators like this is of course a divide by zero test and um, I'll do that in a few minutes just quickly put this through a few more calculations to show some of the uh, other features. So if we want to work out a percentage all we do is we press down the percentage key, it's a toggling key, we put in the value we want to work out the percentage of, so in this case I want to know 5% uh, 5 of 5000, we multiply that by 5 and the answer is of course 250. The other features it's got are what you would expect to get in just a very simple calculator. So if we have a value and we decide we want to multiply it and we start entering a value and decide no, that's not the value we want, uh, we can of course cancel just the value we've entered. We retain the uh, first value we put in and that's exactly how a very simple standard calculator works. We can change the number of decimal points from 0 up to 3 or up to 6. So in this case you enter a value and it automatically shifts it along by the correct number of decimal points. And if you go too far and the number you're putting in is going to exceed its capacity then you will get the uh, overflow light coming on and it's basically telling you it can't uh, proceed with that calculation and if you try to it will come up with generally speaking nonsense. Uh, so now on to the bit that everyone's been waiting for and um, what happens if you try and divide a number by zero and as I said this works in a very similar way to a mechanical calculator and if you've watched my series of videos on the mechanical calculators you'll know that they just continually clatter away trying to reduce the number you try and divide uh, by subtracting zero over and over again waiting for that value to get to zero which of course it never does so the process continues indefinitely. So we'll try a value of one two three divide that value by zero and we'll see what happens. And as you can see it's just going round and round and it will keep doing that forever there's nothing to stop it because it works in exactly the same way as a mechanical calculator. Luckily the cancel key or the clear key uh, will cancel that process. So very similar to a mechanical calculator, a lot quieter of course when it's doing that. If you try that with um, a mechanical calculator like the uh, Fryden then it makes a horrendous racket and it keeps going forever. Uh, this will keep going forever but at least it does so quietly. So a very nice uh, looking calculator for the time. Um, it's a nice display to look at. It's very interesting to watch it doing the calculations. You can kind of see what's going on and it's a very interesting machine to work on. The electronics uh, being very discreet and uh, detail type electronics and especially because of the way that the overall operation of the machine works. It's got the DRAM built in it's got the various functions and the way it's been divided into separate sections makes it a very interesting machine to work on. It would be nice if anyone has got any schematics for this to have a look at them. Uh, it may be a project in the future if none turn up I may reverse engineer this and produce some schematics for it. I think it would be fascinating to look at that. I think schematics for a machine like this would be uh, very interesting, very informative. and. This is a really good way of learning electronics going through a machine like this. Um, it, it's not intuitive when you first start playing with it but as long as you manage not to destroy it in uh, trying to figure out how it works you can learn an awful lot from these um, and again as long as you don't electrocute yourself bear in mind there are some high voltages inside these uh, but they are very interesting to work on.